Indigenous people have been the first that have really felt climate change. It was almost 20 years ago, the first time I heard the words climate change. And it wasn't in a TEDx. It wasn't on some Zoom screen. It wasn't on a TV show. It was at, um, literally at Brown University. They had invited an elder from an indigenous community in the northernmost parts of Canada. But I remember I went to the talk with my mother and I remember us sitting there and this was not a fancy talk, no PowerPoint, nothing. But it was so powerful because this elder stood up there and described the changes in the land, the changes in the water, the changes that were impacting the animals, impacting the seasons, impacting their life ways, impacting their traditions. And it made us start reflecting on how things have changed here and the things that our elders are saying uh, about the changes in the land. Indigenous voices are there and have continued to be there and have continued to be at the forefront of this fight, this fight for equity, environmental equity. It's just erased from the public landscape. It's not that it's not there. It's just erased from the mainstream portals. Um, if you think of things like Standing Rock that finally made it into the mainstream news and things like that, but it took a lot to get that to happen. Children and families and communities, you know, people think it's cliche when they say water is life. Nipanakitiawank, water is life. That's in our language. You know, it's literally a truth, but yet people are not taking it seriously. If we as humans do not have clean drinking water, we cannot survive. We have a history of injustice against indigenous people, you know, through conquest and colonization and land dispossession and the list goes on. But in this 21st century, we're having um, injustice in that pipelines aren't put into the wealthy environments. They're put in brown, indigenous, black, and poor environments. And whether it's right or wrong, that's not the point. The point is it's economical for them to plow right through these spaces. And they don't really care whether it's at the detriment of indigenous and poor and people of color um, communities because those are not valued. Environmental justice equals or is indigenous rights and vice versa. The reality is we do live in a global world. This pandemic shows that. And we can't just think about our own location. We have to think about the whole entire world and how can we combat the vast changes that are happening, that are human-made changes. If it's human-made changes, then we can make decisions that mitigate those changes. I don't know if we can undo what we've done, but we can mitigate what we've done and, and slowly heal um, these processes that will give us some balance. Balance is, is always making sure you're, you're giving back what you're taking. You know, when we grow the three sisters, there's this symbiotic relationship between the corn, the bean, and the squash. You know, it's not just between the three of them, but also between the land and the water and the sea, because you put fish and seaweed in the soil to give nutrients and, and sustenance to the land. You know, the, um, of course, fresh water is raining down to, to, to give it the hydration that it needs. The corn is growing up straight and tall, giving the bean a place to be. The bean is giving nutrients and nitrogen back into the soil. Um, the squash leaves or pumpkin leaves, they're growing very big in order to keep moisture in the ground and to keep the weeds down. You know, they all have their job and there's this symbiotic relationship that creates a balance that ensures the sustenance and sustainability of our people. My grandmother, I actually am wearing my grandmother today. I must have her spirit with me. My grandmother lived to be 100. And I'm like, well, if I can live to be 100, she was almost 101. She was just a few weeks shy of 101 um, when she um, passed over. And the, the blessing that she gave me in our lives are so many. And I think that if we listen to the elders and their wisdom and we apply some of that today, we could all be in a better place. And so I think that she did everything in her life to ensure that 
I could have the best life that I have. And that, and she saw great, great grandchildren. And that's an amazing life. And I hope to live that. And that means that we have to have clean air. We have to have clean water. We have to have reasonable housing. We have to have food. We have to have food systems that can sustain us, that give us healthy, nutritious food to eat. When you think about balance and living in balance with the ecosystems in which we're from, we've done that really well for millennia. And, and yet for a very short period of time, we've managed to destroy it as humans. And so I think that there's a lot to learn from indigenous ways of knowing. 